there is a liquid that can flow upwards, and in this video I will explain how something like that is even possible. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Helium-4. At normal room temperature, Helium-4 is a gas, but if you cool it down enough, it suddenly becomes liquid. If you want to try this at home, I have to disappoint you because you'll have to cool it down to around 4 Kelvin, which is equal to about minus 269 degrees Celsius. I'm making assumptions here, but you probably can't quite reach the temperature at home. Even if you're Santa and live on the North Pole. Sorry. And if you cool it down just a tiny bit more to around 2 Kelvin, Helium-4 suddenly becomes a superfluid. No, it does not become a hero that tries to save the other liquids from bad ones, but rather, something strange happens. Its viscosity becomes zero. What is viscosity? I'm glad you asked. Put simply, viscosity is defined as the resistance to flow. Think of it as the thickness of a fluid. For example, honey has a high viscosity because it doesn't really like to flow around. On the other side, we have water that loves flowing, sometimes a little too much. Whoops. But even water has at least some viscosity. You can see this best when you fill up a glass until it's full, and then add one drop at a time. You will see that even though the water is eventually higher than the edge of your container, it doesn't immediately spill over, and the molecules cling to each other. But when helium-4 is in its superfluid state, it will climb up the walls of its container and even leak through solid materials like glass. If you were to stir a cup filled with helium-4 in that special state, it will slowly start to flow upwards, seemingly defying gravity. What really happens is that centrifugal force, capillary action and quantized vortices work together. Capillary action is the interaction between a liquid and its container. Usually, the molecules of the liquid are a little bit adhesive to the molecules of the vessel. This is even true for water, but the effect is so small it can't be seen with the naked eye. Quantized vortices are like little tornadoes that help the superfluid move without any resistance. It is hard to visualize this concept, but imagine two cars driving on one lane. The first car encounters a lot of air resistance because it's pushing through the air in front of it. The second car that is right behind is in the slipstream and has to deal with a lot less resistance. The vortices are like the first car that cleared the way for the other molecules. So the centrifugal force pulls the liquid outside and capillary action and quantized vortices make it climb upwards instead of going through the side of the container. This is known as the fountain effect. Maybe you're wondering if it would keep moving forever if you stirred it once, because if it doesn't have any resistance at all, that's what you'd expect, if helium-4 were to stay in the bowl that is. But no, that wouldn't be the case. Why? Because even the smoothest surface has bumps in it when you look at it under a microscope. These tiny tiny bumps would eventually make the liquid stop moving, even if it would take much longer to stop than it would be the case with water. If you want to know what happens when you don't stir the liquid helium, it will simply leak through the bottom. This is due to microscopic holes that even seemingly solid materials have. If you made it this far, don't forget to like the video, and maybe you will enjoy this one as well. If you want to get random bits of information every now and then, consider subscribing.